Amen. Okay, as um, now we're going to change up a little bit and, and show the the end of all these things and show uh, a little of what the Lord is is gonna is gonna um, give unto us after we've gone through this um, this little this light affliction that we are to we are to um, get through <clears throat> and. <clears throat> By God's grace, I pray that it, it may blend with, with, what, with what my brethren are also bringing forth and, and showing how the end of all things is going to be illustrated as well in this, um, this, this little time of peace or this thousand years. For the Lord has given us a pattern that we have to work with, with, with two times of trouble, but in between there's this, this time of peace where we are to dwell and 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 be in 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 the light of of Christ's glory and feast with him and Kanar brought out in past presentations that we are going to going into the inner chamber with Christ and as um the Millerites also were brought into the inner chamber after 1844 us too will be likewise brought into this inner chamber as well until we can fully be able to stand in the presence of the Lord and, 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 and be able to manifest His glory and also receive even more from Him. So, um, yes, so as we look into the top of the notes, the title of this is, is called uh, Past, Present, and Future. And um, as we know, the Lord sees past, present, and future as, as one. And something that I pray that I can convey is, is, is how the Lord is going to help us to, to see that as well. Because even now we're getting small glimpses of witnessing past, present, and future in one moment. For we're talking about, about um, these things that are happening in our present. We're using the illustrations of the past and speaking of the future that is to come before us as well. So I pray that we... we we get a better understanding of, of, of this, this topic. So CIHS 150 and 150 paragraph one, it says the subject of the sanctuary or the subject of the Sabbath for our time was the key which unlocked the mystery of the disappointment in 1844. So is the subject of the Sabbath is going to help us to understand the many disappointments as as um, Kennard has illustrated here, from 9-11 to 2014, from 2014 to 2016, from 2016 till the ninth hour is going to illustrate all these disappointments where all our brethren have left from us, where they have turned, up, turned um, against us and lift their heel against us as well. So it says, it opened to view a complete system of truth. Connected and harmonious, showing that God's hand had directed the great Advent movement and, reveal, and revealing present, present duty as it brought to light the position and work of, of, of his people. As the disciples of Jesus, after the terrible night of anguish and disappointment, which is this period, um, were glad when they saw the saw the Lord so did those now rejoice who had looked in faith for his second coming they had expected him to appear in glory to give reward to his servants as their hopes were disappointed they had lost sight of Jesus and with Mary at the sepulchre they cried they have taken away my Lord and I know not where they have laid him now in the holy of holies they again beheld him their compassionate high priest soon to appear as their king and deliverer. Light from the sanctuary illuminated the past, the present, and the future. So alike, light from the Sabbath is going to illuminate to us the past, the present, and the future. Um, next quote, CET 245, paragraph 2. says, As the Lord has manifested himself through the spirit of prophecy, Past, present, and future have passed before me. So the Holy Spirit is also going to be um, given unto us that we may understand the past, present, and future. So we have, we're going to obtain a better understanding of the Sabbath through the, um, 
through the workings of the Holy Spirit. So if that is the case, then a measure of, of, of Pentecost will be upon us as well. Before we have Pentecost here at the end, So we must have it as, as a, um, in an earnest here at the sign as well. Amen, I didn't hear what you said in the beginning. Okay. I have, I have been shown faces that I have never seen, and years after, I knew them when I saw them. I have been aroused from my sleep with a vivid sense of, of subjects previously presented to my mind. And I have written at midnight letters that have gone across the, con the continent and arriving at a crisis have saved great disaster to the cause of God. This is the very things we are going to do. We're going to see where with the, the power of, of the Holy Spirit, we're going to see things that that are that are not yet seen um, unto us and see things that are, are far off. And be able to speak of these things and thus giving a straight testimony of the people and the places and the events that are that they're going to be taking place in. As Ella White was taken to, to New York or these other these various cities that she saw these tall buildings coming down, us being um, blessed by the Holy Spirit would also be 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 brought into vision in those things as well, but only through the word of God. We will be able to see these things plainly through the Bible. No longer will, be it, will it be in parables or in, in symbols unto us. We will plainly see people's names and, and through these figures. This has been my work for many years. A power has Im Im impelled me to reprove and rebuke wrongs that I, have, that I had not thought of. Is this work from, from above or from beneath? Those who really desire to know the truth will find sufficient evidence for belief. Amen. The veil is now removed. For we're going to have a taste of, of this freedom here at the sign, which will point forward to its, its, its grand fulfillment of us being freed from our, our bondage. CC, CCH 76 paragraph 7. The unity that exists between Christ and his disciples does not destroy the personality of either. They are one in purpose, in mind, in character. So um, at the sign, we'll be, we'll be brought even closer into this fullness, being a one with Christ, one with the Father, one with the Holy Spirit, and all the heavenly hosts in mind, purpose, and in character being of one body, with Christ as the head. DA 25, paragraph 3, says, By his life and his death, Christ has achieved even more than recovery from the, from the ruin wrought through sin. It was Satan's purpose to bring about an eternal separation between God and man. But in Christ, we become more closely united to God than if we had never fallen. That is a, is a great blessing. Where we, we really don't know the heights and the, the, the depths of, of, of which Christ is going gonna, is gonna to bring us up to. In taking on nature, the Savior has bond, bond himself to humanity by a tie that is never to be broken. Through the eternal ages, he is linked with us. So God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He gave him not only to bear our sin sins and to die as a sacrifice he gave him to the fallen race to assure us of its immutable counsel of peace god god gave his only begotten son to become one with one of the human family forever to retain his human nature so we would forever from this point onward we would forever obtain uh, attain those heavenly gifts those heavenly blessings And it's nice, we would easily be able to open the scriptures and have them speak to us as if we're, if we're literally in the presence of God. We would have, it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful thing. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. 
Amen. You're brought into the counsels of God. This is the pledge that God will fulfill his word. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. God has adopted human nature in the, in the person of his son and has carried the same into the, the highest heaven. So when, we're here, when we hear the, the pledge that this is my begotten son, the Lord is calling all into the truth as his own. Calling his his children into his into his um into into his sanctuary into the his meeting place. It is the Son of Man who shares the throne of the universe. It is the Son of Man whose name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Next quote: Early writings. When the Lord sees fit to give a vision, I am taken into the presence of Jesus and angels. So, so if Ellen White experienced that, then it must be fulfilled in, in our time to show that it was not only Christ that was, that was brought into the presence, but Ellen White was also brought into the presence of God as well. And, 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 and am entirely lost to earthly things. So if she's entirely lost to earthly things, we have to... Not look at it as a blight when all of our earthly support is taken away. Because the only way to be lost to earthly things is if we're separated from these earthly things. That is the purpose in all earthly support being taken. So that we can be brought into his presence. We can't take our, our luggage, our earthly luggage with us into this presence. This same thing with the, um, with the, the narrow way vision. They had to lose all of these, all, all of their possessions. They, it could not go over the chasm with them. So swinging over the chasm is swinging right into the, um, the most holy place, into this, 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 this council. It says, my attention is often directed to scenes transpiring upon earth. At times, I am carried far ahead into the future and shown what is to take place. Then again, I'm shown things as they have occurred in the past. So past and the future are alike. They're all as, as one. She's seeing them in one, in one harmonious, um, what was that? Strain. A, amen. Strain in one, in one view. Okay. So if she's seeing the past and the, and the future, she's seeing these, these nations going up and down. They're coming and they're going. So ED 183, paragraph 4. From the rise and fall of nations, as made plain in the pages of Holy Writ, they need to learn how worthless is mere outward and worldly glory. This is the past, the present, and the future. These rise and falls of nations. Because we're speaking of the rise and fall of the United States. And we're speaking of the, the future kingdom that is to come. But we're using Babylon of old, Medo Persia of old, Greece of old. So we're seeing how they play out in old how it's going to play out in our present, and how these, these earthly kings are going to fall in the end until the, the true kingdom is, is brought to light. Babylon, with all its, its power and the magnificence, the like of, of which our world has never since beheld, power and magnificence, which to, which to the people of that day seems so stable and enduring, how completely has, has it passed away as a flower of the grass it has perished so perishes all that has not god for its foundation only that which is bound up with his purpose and expresses his character can endure all only those who have who have the uh, the same mind character and purpose it is these great truths that old and young need to learn we need to study the working out of god's purpose in the history of nations and in the revelation of those of things to come that we may estimate at their true value things seen and things unseen, that we may learn what is the true aim of life, that viewing the things of, of time in the light of eternity, we may put them 
in their truest and noblest use. Thus learning here, thus learning here the principles of, of his kingdom and becoming a subject and citizens, we may be prepared at his coming to enter with him into his possession. He that ruleth in the heavens is the one who sees the end from the beginning. The one before whom the mysteries of the past and the future are alike um, outspread. And who, beyond the woe and darkness and ruin that sin has wrought, beholds the accomplishment of his purpose, his purposes of love and blessing. Though clouds and darkness are round about him, righteousness and judgment are the foundation of his throne. So this, that same, that very same thing is supposed to be our, um, our foundation of our throne, this righteousness and judgment. Amen. We'll see the foundation of all men's, all men's throne, even because all are going to be revealed in that, in that time. We eat. Amen. By fire. MH442. Says, but history, as as commonly studied, is concerned with man's achievements, his victories in battle, his success in attaining power and greatness. God's agency in the affairs of men is lost sight of. Few study the working out of His purpose in the rise and fall of nations. So these are those who 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 are not brought into into His purposes, but those are going to be used still in in His great plan for. Those have, are the ones who will bring us even closer to him that, would, that have been used to bring that, that fire about. Mark 4, 34 says, But without a parable spake he not unto them. And when they were alone, he expounded all things to his disciples. Numbers 12, With him will I speak mouth to mouth even apparently and not in dark speeches and the, the similitude of the Lord shall be, shall he behold. So no, with this veil that's going to be removed and the Sabbath now even more clear unto the, the minds of God's people, no longer will, will, will look into the Bible and it, and it be just, just, just parables. All things will be now, oh, be now clear. Now, there will no longer be this separation between you and the, and the Father. Sin Amen. Sin is removed. And clearly you can see into, into, um, into the sanctuary. And the Lord can now use you to speak mouth to mouth as he did with, as he did with Moses. A Amen. And Jeremiah and all the prophets of old. So all the prophets of old, they were brought into that, um, into that communion as well. They spoke of the rise and fall of nations. So they also were, were brought into that union with the divine. Matthew 13 says, He understand, he understanded and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mystery. Huh? Oh, amen. He answered and said unto them, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. For whosoever hath, to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not, for him shall be taken away, even that he hath. Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they, they seeing see not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand." 
So if they don't understand, they're showing that they're what? Amen. They're showing that they're brute beasts. The Lord is plainly going to make a separation between, between um, human and, 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 and the beast. For sin has brought man down into the beast. But just like he did with Nebuchadnezzar, he brought, he brought him out of his, out of his um, degradation into being back into a man. And placed him back upon his throne. That's showing the rise of, of, of humanity. Is he going to say something? Amen. Took him out of his brutish state. Took him out of the pit. And made him now to understand. Egypt, not Pharaoh, Pharaoh in Egypt, he didn't want to understand these things. He chose not to understand and, and stay as a brute beast. And then the earth swallowed him up as well. The water swallowed him up. Amen. His temple was destroyed. His kingdom had to fall. So the Lord couldn't speak to him um, plainly. He had to continue in parables. 1 Corinthians 13. When I was a child, I spake as a child and understood as a child. So he, he, he only could understand parables. I thought, as, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass, dark, a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. So... The Lord is the Lord is is bringing us from this 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 childlike state where He could speak plainly and clear unto us that we can give a a message devoid of self, devoid of any type of sin. It's Amen. So to understand parables and to see them plainly is to is to be face to face with with God, to be face to face with with the one. The, the, the one that has created all things. So Daniel 10, for Daniel also understood, understood this, this parable. It says, in the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a thing was revealed unto Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar. It says, and the thing was true, but the time appointed was long. And he understood the thing and had understanding of the vision. And it says, in those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. I ate no, no pleasant bread, neither came flesh nor wine in my mouth, neither did I anoint myself at all. Three, three whole weeks were fulfilled. And in the four and twentieth day, the four and twentieth day of the month, as I, of the first month, as I was by the side of the great river, which is Hittakel, then I lifted up my eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose loins were girded with fine gold of you, of Euphaz. So, so as we all know that Daniel was seeing, Daniel was seeing Christ. Now he was beginning to see see things more clearer, and was able to speak to um to to Christ face to face, but. He had to go, but he first had to go down into the pit. Because once he saw Christ, what happened? He fell upon his face. He fell. He, 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 he died, and then the Lord had to resurrect him. And these three touches is the same three touches that was, that was shown in, um, in, what was that? Yes, yes, in Isaiah 6. But also, um, no, no, no. In the, the Valley of the Dry Bones, when Ezekiel called forth the bones and he had to be, amen, he had to be uh, recreated. Because Christ spoke to, to Daniel face to face. Not Daniel, I'm sorry. He spoke to Adam face to face. So only through sin that that, that intercourse had to, had to be removed. So only through this fire, only through this, this burial that 
that we have to be recreated, that that, must, that, that can occur once again. Ezekiel 12, it says, Son of man, what is that proverb that ye have in the, in the land of Israel, saying the days are prolonged and every vision faileth? Tell them therefore, thus saith the Lord God, I will make this proverb to cease, and, and they shall no more use it as a proverb in Israel. But say unto them, the days are at hand in every, and, and the effect of every vision. For there shall be no more any vain vision, nor flattering divination within the, the house of Israel. For I, the Lord, for I am the Lord, I will speak. So at the end, the Lord will speak. And he'll speak plain. And as Daniel was was um, the mouth of the mouth of God, the Lord has to use a representation to speak to the children as well. To speak to to those who understand as a child, I might say. Psalm 78 says, I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old. So what are these, these dark sayings? Ezekiel, Ezekiel 7 will, will tell us what these, what these things are. It says, Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Also thou son of man, thus saith the Lord God unto the land, unto the land of Israel, and end, the end is come upon the four corners, four corners of the land, just like with Sodom, because they came from all four quarters. So because they came to come past you around by all four quarters, this, this, this end, this destruction comes upon all four quarters. It says, now is the end come upon thee, and I will send mine anger upon thee, and, and, and will judge thee according to thy ways. And will recompense upon thee all thine abominations. And mine eyes shall, shall not spare thee, neither will I have pity. But I will recompense thy ways upon thee, and thine abominations shall be in the midst of thee. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, and evil, and only evil, behold, is come. For Satan has come down in the beginning with great fury. For he has... He has considered Job. He has seen Job. And he has seen this, this little praying company that is trying to defile, not defile, that is trying to deny his claims and turn from his, um, from his suggestions. Verse 6, An end is come, the end is come. It watches for thee. Behold, it is come. The morning is come unto thee, O thou that dwellest in the land. The time is come, the day of the Lord is near, and, and not the sound again of the mountains. Now will I shortly pour out my fury upon thee, and accomplish mine anger upon thee. And I will judge thee according to thy ways, and will recompense thee for all thine abominations. And mine eyes shall not spare, neither will I have pity. I will recompense thee according to thy ways, and thine abominations that are in the midst of, of thee. And ye shall know that I am the Lord that smiteth thee. Behold the day, behold it is come, the morning is gone forth, the rod hath blossomed, pride has budded, violence is, is risen up into a rod of wickedness. None of them shall remain, nor of their multitude, nor of, of, any, of their, any of theirs, neither shall there be wailing for them. The time is come, the day draweth near, let not the buyer rejoice, nor the seller mourn, for the wrath is upon all the multitude thereof. For the seller shall not return to that which is sold, although they were yet alive, for the vision is touching the whole multitude thereof, which shall not return. Neither shall any strengthen himself in the iniquity of his life. They have blown the trumpet even to make all ready, but none goeth to the, 
to the battle, for my wrath is upon all the multitude thereof. The sword is without, and the pestilence and famine within. He that is, is in the field shall die with the sword, and he that is in the city, famine and pestilence shall, shall devour him. But they that escape of, of them shall escape, and shall be on the mountains like doves of the valley, all of them mourning every one for their for his iniquity. This this is why we have to be out in into the country. For all these things coming upon the um the cities, the suburbs and all these and all these towns, we have to flee out of out of these um these places. All hands shall be feeble and all knees shall be weak as water. They shall all also gird themselves with sackcloth, and horror shall cover them, and shame shall be upon all faces, and boldness upon all their oh, and baldness, thank you, upon all their heads. They shall cast their silver in the streets, and their gold shall be removed, and their silver and their gold shall not be able to deliver them in the day of the wrath of the Lord. They shall not satisfy their souls, neither fill their bowels, because it is the stumbling block of their iniquity. As for the beauty of his ornament, he, he set it in majesty, but they made the images of their abominations and of their detestable things therein. Therefore have I set it far from thee, and I will give it into the hands of the strangers for a prey and to the wicked of the earth for a spoil, and they shall pollute it. My face will I turn also from them, and they shall pollute my secret place, for the robbers shall enter into it and defile it. Make a chain for the make a chain, for the land is full of bloody crimes, and the city is full of violence. Wherefore I will bring the worst of the heathen, and they shall possess their houses. I will also make the pomp of the strong to cease, and their holy places shall be defiled. Destruction cometh, and they shall seek peace, and there shall be none. Mischief shall come upon mischief, and rumor shall be upon rumor. Then shall they seek a vision of the prophet, but the law shall perish from the priests and the counsel of the ancients. The king shall mourn, and the prince shall be clothed with desolation, and the hands of the people of the land shall be troubled. I will do unto them after their way, and according to their deserts will I judge them, and they shall know that I am the Lord." It is a, a great um, condemnation that is, that is, that is going to come. But only those who are in this council will be, will be safe. Amen. This council of peace. And all these things are going to be opened up from, from, God word, from God's word. For we are going to be able to see these things unfold right before us and then be able to proclaim it and have it manifested in, um, in, in reality, in present day. Luke 8 says, As he said, Unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to others in parables, that seeing they might not see, and hearing they, may not, um, they might not understand. Having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to, to the purpose of of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will, that we should that we should be to the praise of his glory, who first trusted in Christ, in whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, after they believed, ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance unto the redemption of the purchased possession unto the Unto the praise of his glory. So a, a perfect promise will be um, given unto us. Shall we close with a, a word of prayer? Merciful Father in heaven, I pray, Lord, that you may please create in us a clean heart, that we may be able to receive you 
and receive these these great blessings that you are willing to pour out upon us that we may be brought into this this in brought into your secret place may learn of 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 all these truths and that that your holy word may permeate through us and and guide others to thy glorious light be with us in in this time and I pray all these things, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen.